From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Hippy Presents. You know, I, we receive so many letters every single week, and all of them are uh, saying how much they appreciate Jack Van Hippy, that he is willing to put uh, his uh, reputation on the line as well as saying the Lord is coming soon, basing everything upon the Word of God. What a great Bible teacher he is and so forth. You know, Jack, that could cause a little bit of pride in you, but. Thank the Lord you're not that way, but you just wrote a book. <laughs> oh, Rex, I'm the humblest man. I, I wrote a book, Humility and How I Obtained It. Greatest thing on the market. <laughs> she wanted me to tell that. <laughs> you know, laughter is good. It's good for the soul. The soul is the emotion of a person. And it's good to just have a good laugh once in a while, especially in the light of some of the things that are going on in the world. We need to uh, sort of, like Jesus said, come apart and rest a while. It's good to come apart from some of the things that are going on. But we want to focus today on something that really moves my heart, and it has to do with religion around the world. Not just religion, but Christian. A Christian decline. You know, a lot of people are religious, but they don't really know the Lord. They're not really Christian. Let's take a look, if you will, please, at this first headline. From the Wall Street Journal, Is American Religious Liberty in Peril? In oh, wow. That really, really is quite a question. Well, I'm happy for what I see here. What the religious right gets right. Conservative Christians and other religious fundamentalists have legitimate concerns. Oh, yes, we do. It would serve their opponents well to acknowledge that. Now, do you notice where this is? Our president's office, they're praying. Thank the Lord our president has this in his office. And, of course, that is uh, our president and vice president. And there is the pastor of the largest church in Dallas, um, Texas. Atheist minister says not allowing her to continue in church ministry would be a betrayal. Are you kidding? In other words, she doesn't have to believe that there is a God in order to be a minister in Toronto, Canada. I'm going to stop here for just a moment. Jack, I, I just can't quite believe that anybody can believe that they can go to heaven if they don't believe that there's a God. And they even continue being a pastor. The greatest thing that church did is kick her out. And I don't mean maybe. You can't be an atheist and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. My Bible says the fearful and the unbelieving shall be in hellfire. And what is the unbelieving? That you don't believe that Christ is God. And if you don't preach that, get out of the Christian religion. That church did right, and thank God for that pastor. And you know, Rexella, it's it's bad right now worldwide. Worldwide, right? We have lost fifty percent of Christianity. Every nation on earth. And this happened in the last thirty years, and they say in the next thirty there'll be nothing left. The church is going out of business. They're all fighting one another. Nine hundred denominations. I have now created a new organization. And I'm getting rid of all the 900 different titles where they have these little fights with one another. Oh, I believe in one saved, always saved. I believe in holiness only. If you don't have it, come on. 
there's only going to be one thing I'm preaching, one thing I'm uniting people into, and it's going to be called Christianity. No other title. And it's going to have the five points of fundamentalism. We're not going to have all kinds of fancy things you have to believe. Here's all you have to believe. The deity of Christ. He's God. The virgin birth. The blood atonement at Calvary's cross when he shed it for us. The resurrection. God saying, I'm satisfied with what my son did for you on that cross. And finally, the wonderful message of Christ coming again. Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for it. And the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. When you really are saved, you really love him, you can hardly wait for him to get here. I can't. Mm. And I'm going to tell you something. There's so many of you who are backslidden. You have no more joy in the Lord. Do you believe this book? Well, the Bible speaks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you are, it says you sing in psalms, hymns. Spiritual song, singing, make a melody in your heart to the Lord. You can't control it. Oh, I know what that's all about. I, I am a changed man. I'm not the old Jack Fanny Bean. A man by the name of Doug Denise who just went to be with the Lord. He was the head of Integrity Media. And he kept talking to me about getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And brother, I have it now. I've gone all my life loving God, loving Jesus, loving the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And when you are, oh, you're changed. Why? Because there are nine fruits there that he possesses. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, hallelujah. I want every bit of it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you've done to me. I'm a new Jack Vanity because of your movement in my heart and my life. Well, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, the moment that we accept Christ, His Spirit comes to dwell within us. But that's a little bit different. He can dwell there but not fill us. So we need to ask Him, Lord, fill my Amen. life. Amen. And help me to be all that you want me to be. Sometimes we want to be what we want to be, but what the Lord wants us to be always. And you know, Jesus was not surprised that the earth is not surprised either, that the earth is going the way it is in denying him. Because he said when he ascended into heaven, well, I find faith on the earth when I return. He knew it was going this way. Let's take a look at how far it's going worldwide. Less than half of UK Christians believe Jesus died and rose again. Hey, look at that. They call themselves Christians, but they don't believe that Jesus died and rose again. How can you be a Christian? You can't. Former Anglican bishop, don't take Christianity seriously. Oh, my. These hypocrites should have got out of the ministry. False Christ and false prophets. Number of Christians in Britain in dramatic decline. It is worldwide, friends, not just there and here. The centrality of the resurrection. Is it the essence of the gospel? And you know what? That should be the essence of the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the message of salvation. Jack's made that clear. You can't leave it out. You can't leave the message of Christ out of Christianity. That is the message. Jack, I want to thank you again. You've never, for as long as I've known you, you've always given the actual message of accepting Christ only through Jesus Christ, not by joining a church, but by accepting him. Jesus said, <clears throat> I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can come to God the Father but by me. Now, you know how many times that's written in this book? 804. What? 
If he said it once, you better believe it. When he says 804 times, Jesus is the only way, you better believe it or you'll burn in hell forever. Now, the first 400 times is that Jesus is the only way. Can I get saved without him? The next 400 and four times, it tells why the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Amen. And there's no other way to be saved except the blood of Christ. And that's what happened that day at Calvary's cross when they took the Roman cat of nine tails and his back shoulders were torn open as the hooks got into his flesh. They plucked off his beard, beat his face with their fists, and it bled. He was a bloody mess from head to toe. But the Bible says, by his blood we are saved. No other way, 404 times. And I'll tell you, when these people are in those churches, and I'm talking about guys that are clergymen, Cardinals, popes. Yeah, popes. We have one right now. Now listen to me. It's the Vatican magazine two months ago that said, we want him out. The leaders of the church there, we want him out. Why? He doesn't believe the Holy Catholic Bible. Hmm. He says, all atheists are going to go to heaven. Come on, Pope Francis, get your head screwed up right. I would to God that Pope John came back. I was Catholic. I got away from it. The Catholic Church believes in the great five points that I'm going to be promoting to the world. The deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the blood atonement, the bodily resurrection is coming in. And you know where I got that? I got my heart rewarmed through Pope John, Paul, and Pope Benedict. Right now, Benedict's under lock and key. Why? So little Pope Francis, he did his way. You know what he did? He said to all the people, if you vote for me, I'll give you positions. And the day he got and I heard him, he said, isn't this, I, I can't believe you love me that much. It was a crooked deal, Pope Francis, and you know it. Now, why do I say this? Because I read everything there is. I've read 12,000 volumes in my life. I read all the magazines. I get the Vatican magazine, and they just said two months ago, this pope is not a true believer. He turns against what the Bible says. He says, I do not believe in hell. 211 times this book says there is a hell. That's why it says the fearful and unbelieving of Bama, Hormers, Mersons, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. That's Gehenna, the eternal penitentiary for souls. And Pope Francis, if you don't believe it, get out of there. You don't deserve to be the Pope of those precious people. And other things you don't believe. Atheists are all going to be in heaven. Come on, where did you get that? What fairy tale book you've been reading? Here is the book you ought to believe, and the Catholic and Protestant Bibles are the same. And what does it say about atheists? No unbeliever can get to heaven, and an atheist says, I don't believe in God, and he's therefore qualified as an unbeliever. Now, listen to Jesus. Pope Francis, I'm going to quote some verses. And I've done this twice. This is my third time. I will meet you anywhere to debate the Word of God, the Roman Catholic Bible, and if you lose, you get out, and I mean business. Catholic people don't deserve to have a man like you who hates the message of Jesus Christ. Yeah, you. I've debated 200 in my time. One every time, because I've remembered this book. I can quote it from cover to cover. I've gone through it a hundred times by memory. Now, let me give you the verses again. John 3, 16. Hey, you are against this. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son, the cross, 
that whosoever believeth in the Son should not perish hell, but everlasting life. Listen to verse 318. He that believeth in the Son is not condemned. He believeth not in the Son is condemned already. Verse 36. He that believeth in the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. 211 times your Roman Catholic Bible states that. And I like the story of the rich man. He says, Father Abraham, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger and cool my tongue. I am tormented in the flames of hell. And you're going to let a lot of people in your religion go because you don't believe what it teaches and you're keeping it quiet and even denying it. God forgive you. Get out of that position as the Pope. You don't deserve it. Been a lot of great, wonderful men there. I love them. Pope John, Pope Benedict, many others. Bishop Sheen, thank God for all of them. Get out, Pope Francis. You know, Jack, I want to thank you so much because he's not afraid <laughs> to enlighten us about what is really happening. And the Lord laid it on my heart to write a book about Dr. Jack Van Ippie, dynamic and dedicated. And uh, I wrote this book about his life and about how he has never altered from what God has called him to do, why he was born, dynamic and dedicated. And whenever Jack has given a message from the time I've known him and long before that, He's always given the Word of God to back up everything he says. How wonderful it is to have Jack Van Hippy today because he's not afraid to speak up with the Word of God backing him Amen. up. Amen. All right. So this is our offer of the week, and we want you to be sure and get it. Uh, I believe that it certainly expresses a lot on my heart concerning him and his ministry and why he went the direction he went. So many men haven't, you know, in the world today. Now, I want to get on something else here. <clears throat> something that really hurts my heart, and that has to do with iniquity shall abound. And um, starting with this next article, my, how enlightening it was. How to fix a brain hooked on porn. I did not really realize, and they've done much research that it actually, if you continue to use porn in your life and read it all the time and so forth, it can cause you to lose some brain power. My word. And what you're a, at plus your soul. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely, Jack. Very, very enlightening. Going on. The true false test. True false. Whoa. Test for sexual misconduct allegations. My, oh, my. There's so many who sympathize with those who have been assaulted. Southern Baptists address sex abuse as critics rally. Well, praise the Lord for the critics. No second chances for abusers. Jesus never shamed women. Be like Jesus. Take abuse seriously and love the victims. Well, it's not just in one denomination. Scientology finale tackles sexual assault. Oh, my, oh, my. And going on, the Wall Street Journal church offers to settle with a catch. They're saying that accusers in sexual abuse cases can opt for compensation, but must agree not to sue. Oh, my word. I can't believe that. Francis Top, Cardinal, guilty of covering up priest's abuse. Here, 395 clergy accused of abuse in Illinois alone and that has to do with the Catholic clergy. Vatican law, priests, nuns must report sex abuse cover-ups, but not to the police. And this last one that I want to go to before I go to back to Jack, burdens my heart, probably as much if not more than any others. And it has to do with sex trafficking nightmare in America. It's estimated that at least 100,000 children some estimate 200,000 girls and boys 
are bought and sold for sex in the United States every year. I want to cry with as many as 300 children in danger of trafficking next year. I can't believe it, that they would actually sell their own children or some are kidnapped. Oh my, are we really facing iniquity shall abound to me? That is probably the lowest that you could go. And Jesus knew it would happen again because he said, if you hurt a child, it's better for you if a Something were hanged about your neck and you were cast into the sea. Yes, cast into the sea. In other words, put to death. Jesus knew what was going to happen. We need to protect our children. Jack, we've come a long way. Iniquity shall abound. When these beasts have little tiny children and just try to destroy them because they can't keep their pants on, I'll be glad to take that stone and hang it around every one of you crooks' necks and drop you in the ocean myself. I'm mad. I'm angry. And that's going on. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, I said it last week, I'm going to repeat it. In all Christianity, worldwide, 70% of the men, including the ministers, are into pornography making sex with pictures, dirty, rotten pictures of naked women. How are you going to have a revival to wake America? Not only that, but I'm not going to let the Muslims off. Guess what they're doing? They kill their daughter if they have premarital sex. If they kill homosexuals and they kill their own people, who say one word against Allah or Muhammad. Or, are you getting it? They find anyone that they think is a fake. I don't really believe the true faith, their faith. They kill them. You kill everyone who is not a Muslim. And then what? You know how God rewards them? 72 virgins for all eternity to make a whorehouse out of heaven. Do we need a revival in this country? Oh, yes. Our Bible says that Christianity is on the way out. They now have lost 50% of the people in all the world in just the last 30 years, and it's going to go down to nothing. Exactly what the Bible prophesied, and that's why Christianity is going to go out soon. And that's at the time of the rapture. We go up, they're judged, and then he sets up the kingdom of heaven and earth. Pure, pure. And Pope Francis, you won't be around to join it. Oh, Jack, you know, it is wonderful to know that in the face of everything we talk about the last couple of weeks, last week and this week, and about a war that's going to be fought over in the Middle East, the Battle of Armageddon and all the rest, that we have a blessed hope in Jesus. That's why Jesus came. Some of you right now who've been watching have been convicted of something in your life. Maybe we haven't named it, but maybe we have named it. You can be forgiven if only you will come to the Lord Jesus. Ask him, the Savior of the world, to be your Savior, cleanse you, you'll be ready for heaven. Jack, our time is almost gone, but pray that most important prayer. Come into my heart, be my Savior. Pray with him, will you please? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all, all sin. Care what you've done, if you're willing to forget us. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, but you blood washes away every sin and I trust in you today Jesus wash me right now as I receive you as my personal savior I ask this in your name Jesus amen amen that is our blessed hope and that's where we're going to go to heaven if we receive Jesus please write to me let me know that you did this first steps in a new direction will be in the mail as soon as I hear 
from you. Oh, how good it is to know the Lord, to be ready for heaven in a day and age in which we're living, right? Our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penipe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Now, this wonderful offer of the week, Dr. Jack Penipe, dynamic and dedicated, a man and his mission. Well, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order dynamic and dedicated. My, my, what a book. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Eller. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you to make the call or write to us this week for this book. You know, even though I wrote it, uh, there's just so much in here that I'd like to share with you. A lot of pictures, too, that you won't get any other place. A hundred. A hundred, yeah. Well, dynamic and dedicated. You know, a man and his mission. Jack has always had a mission in life. And I just praise the Lord so much that he has. Well, even on the back of the book here, <laughs> I got a picture. I just kind of filled it up with uh, some of the pictures that I like the best. And I trust that you will enjoy it. But there's so much about why he was called into the ministry, how God has used him, and how dedicated he has been. I've watched him. Forty million my... souls you and I have won to Christ. Well, I can't. I'm yeah. so humbled by that, Jack. And next week, we're going to continue on with... Uh, really the first message I ever heard him give, The Coming War with Russia, but about an article that I saw in the USA Today, Trump on Iran, we don't want war, but the United States is prepared after attack on Saudi oil. We're going to deal with that and much more uh, next week. I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. In life and in death, you know, so often we think about living for the Lord. Do we think about where death will lead us? We need to really have that peace in our minds every single day, too. And you can have if you prayed that prayer with Jack this week. In life and in death, Christ is our hope. How good it is to focus on him in this day and age in which we live. And we're happy to be able to come into your home every single week. I always want you to remember, uh, and by the way, I got a letter from a lady who says, my little girl says goodbye to you every time you say bye-bye. So I want to end it like this again. We we'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.